Well, also uh, the inspiration of what to do and what to build uh, is also coming from the customers. Because the customer is the, the most valuable uh, source for new inspirations. Because the customer tells us what he's missing, what he would like to have, you know. And then we have people that have so many toys in their, in their collections that they say, oh, how about if we mix this with that? And uh, What could that be? And suddenly it becomes an idea that is also wanted by some more people. So it becomes a series. Could be 20 cars suddenly that are born out of an idea like that. have experienced here um, from the full-time uh, working you really clearly have a kind of family or very intense friend relationship with those petrol head customers that we have and our customer base is uh, very very intense but therefore not so big that this means if somebody is totally in love with the roof philosophy he will come again and again for a new project to do together and therefore you have a very close feedback from the customer because he has one, two, three cars and you get permanent feedback because you just love to discuss all of the, the experiences that he has with the roof car. And therefore um, this gives us the, the new ideas and influences also our vision what the next car should have uh, talking of specifications. And on the other hand, each car is an individual car, yeah. so when you have a certain model that you're offering, the customer still gives you questions, can we change something on the engine, I want a different type, or can we have a different appearance, different body parts, so you permanently do one-off development for, the, for each individual car if the customer is really looking for that. And so therefore it's a permanent dynamic process together with the customer who is more of your uh, petrol head friend yes, yes. and not just a, a customer that you see as a, as a clear customer and, uh, and how do you say, a uh, um, deliverer uh, relationship. Yes, yes. Yeah. Now I know to come up with these concepts, it takes a lot of studying, huh? And a long vision, you know, we have uh, had thoughts about this project already for many years. Huh? And uh, then we were uh, backed up basically with the support of uh, some of our longtime customers. Because we, we, we had the dialogue and we asked them, said, okay, um, we, are, we will bring back the more classical shape car from Roof. Um, is this something you would be interested in buying? And they said, yes, of course, but it needs to have the latest materials. And this is why we came up with the carbon fiber and came up with the ceramic brakes. foot-pounds of torque makina, 3600 cc, ومخاويها ستة غيار غير عادي فورمولا عطت السيارة القابلية إنها توصل حول ال 340 كيلو متر بالساعة بمسافات قصيرة Carbon fiber must cost a fortune, huh? Absolutely So what, how, how do you guys do it? Do you, do you make like a, a, a monocue and then you just duplicate? Um, yeah, we are, uh, in, in fact, with this uh, car here, we have built a, co a complete uh, chassis uh, out of normal uh, sheet metal uh -huh. and aluminium. And then we, uh, we finished it completely in the roof way without the rain gutters and with the integrated roll cage and uh, the integrated mirrors also. Uh -huh. And then we basically built a mold from the original car. You could say it was scanned in in 3D and then we could have all the tooling for the carbon fiber parts. Uh, and then we can duplicate that. Uh.
A <laughs> mission to land. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is beautiful. And effortless. Yes, you know? yes, yes, of course. It makes this car makes it easy. <laughs> 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 Take off and landing within three seconds. Yeah. <laughs> so what's the max uh, speed uh, you can pull on this one? Well, around 330 kilometers per hour. Okay. But this is a gearbox that is not um, for the maximum speed. You can still change to six gear, so you could probably do 350. Oh, okay. Yeah. Change the ratios of the uh, transmission. Yeah, the, the gear ratio of the six gear, yeah. Awesome, awesome. Let me tell you, to me, uh, Roof is like art on four wheels. <laughs> art on four wheels. Thank you very you much. You guys make it look easy, and I know it's a lot of effort behind everything. Like the interior of the car, it's superbly done, you know? The details and everything you guys put in, the amount of effort, the body, the, the, the performance. Ah. <laughs> performance is something. Thank you very much, we try very hard. Yeah, yeah, and you know, to me, being in your region, inside this car, I can feel everything, you know. In Kuwait, we have only straight lines. Uh -huh. Over here, you got the curves, you got the geography, you know. Uphill, downhill, <laughs> you know. This car is born for this, you know. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, 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 beautiful, beautiful. الموتر جدا نشيط وثابت بالشارع نسخة من الضفدع القديم ولكن بقلب جديد وروح شبابية جديدة مرسومة رسم تقاطيعة وحساباتها الميكانيكية مدروسة ومهندسة Turbos. Uh... Yes, uh, on this engine, uh, it came as a, a turbo engine as a base, but we re-engineered uh, everything up from the um, from the connecting rod piston, uh -huh. camshafts, turbochargers, intercoolers, and of course the electronic control unit, as well as the catalytic converters. Okay, okay. So it's a whole different uh, uh, organs. Yes. Yeah. Everything that is responsible for the power and that is moving needs to be uh, exchanged for better material or better performance. Yeah, yeah. Because we're going up from 400 horsepower to almost 600. Yes, yes. So that's uh, 50 percent. Yes, yes. 600 on this wheel spread is amazing. Absolutely. It can take it easily. You know, I've seen, I've seen modified uh, cars and throughout the world. Yeah. Similar wheel spread uh, uh -huh. base, yeah. but when you change or upgrade the engine, the chassis cannot take it. You know, it's a, you, all, you you either kill yourself or kill the car. You know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Understand? Yeah, but again, the German technology, uh, uh, the manufacturing, you know, the the, the lifespan yes. of of uh, experience is amazing built for a long life <laughs> yes of course of course and from your perspective you think it's it's easy to maintain right yes it's just a, a effortless standard maintenance where you uh, change the oil change the spark plugs change the tires yeah sometimes the brake pads yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> and that's it yeah. Beautiful car, man. 
Thank you for the ride. You're welcome. Well, the, the air-cooled has a certain charm. So unique, the engine sound, because you have uh, the engine sound combines with the uh, fan sound of the uh, of the air-cooled fan of the cooling system, and uh, this this uh, how would I call it? Like the early 911 had this pe peculiar sound, which uh, sounded almost like a saw. You know, uh, it was very uh, noisy and peculiar uh, noise that that goes through your bones. You know. And, and that, that is character. Yeah. This is what these cars were representing. You know. What do you see? I can see the patterns. What do you see? I can see the patterns. Love the deja vu. He could love a, a Peugeot because he seen something interesting in the technology and the development, and that's what he, he sees. And he's constantly developing something in his head. And sometimes he comes and says, "Like, I have an idea." And I go, "Okay, is it a three-point seat belt idea or is it a six points? Which one I need to put on?" Because at the end we go through this together, and it's really a pleasure. I'll keep on counting them seconds, seconds. R5611. Yes. Okay, the R5611 is, of course, a, a one off and a very special car. I wanted to build something um, like if Mr. Ferry Porsche would have said in 1965 to his team of engineers, Oh, wonderful what you built with the 911. I'm very happy with this outcome. But now I want a 356 where you bring all that ideas and all that material into the 356 and this was the outcome a four-cylinder engine that is based on the 911 engine a five-speed gearbox and the suspension of the 911 and uh, more modern technology from the suspension and brakes yeah, yeah. that was the idea yeah. and i love this car of course <laughs> <laughs> You know, you have to motion, you have to, to be able to have this, to create this relationship with the car. You know, all of these uh, automatic, you know, the double clutch is fantastic, super smart. Nobody can do it faster as a human being. But at the same time, you're missing this emotion, you know, missing how the smell of the clutch after I burn it. <laughs> For being a bad driver, you know, all this emotion is, it, it is there. And then you feel in control as well, but you know, I'm, by no means a good driver. I became a better driver because of what I do, what I live.
وحالها من حال باقي الشركات العالمية تستات ومؤامرات واختراعات يومية ساهموا مع شركة سيمنز العالمية لمناوشات توعوية لذوي الأذواق الإسبورتية وعملوا بروتوتايبات تجريبية فقط لتوصيل الصورة براس الناس إن الموضوع ما هو صعب وإحنا جاهبين إذا يتطلب الأمر Well, the Green Star is an electric car, and uh, I was always uh, very enthused about building an electric car, uh, which of course is for a petrol head, which I am too, of course, the, up, out of one of the craziest petrol heads, um, a controversy, you know, but uh, I took it from the point that I say, all right, there's also something that must make sense in the future for city driving, for uh, within a radius of 200 kilometers driving, that the electric car has a chance. And I think it will grow very strongly now uh, with the new uh, technology. And we felt that there is no better car than the 911 for an electric car and to call it um, emotion without emission. That is our slogan. motivated because uh, even my grandfather already had the imagination to have a hydroelectric power plant so that you have the river the water runs through a turbine because it has to go down the waterfall anyway so it doesn't harm if you take a turbine and have it driven by the water and you can do electricity for a lot of houses or other users and uh, so we wanted to combine the, these two things bring them into symbiosis because we have a sports car and the sports car has one downside, it has emissions which are not environmentally friendly. But you have green energy and you can use an electric motor that has instant torque, which is sporty, good acceleration. And you bring this together, have uh, green energy and you have uh, it directly propelling the sports car. So we We went public with the car, and for a while it went, it went so crazy that I was thinking, say, I wonder what we were doing before. Because everybody, it was television, crew, everybody came. So I would say we were pretty much of the pioneers of bringing, in, not bringing the electric car, but bringing it into a sport car. built the Greenster based on the romantic early Targa with the soft rear window and uh, put the electric drivetrain into this car and to power and charge the car with our own hydroelectric power plant which is 100% renewable energy. So I thought this is a very green idea to reflect in one of our cars. And it worked very well. The whole world was watching us. At that time there were no electric cars. Now everybody has an electric car, they're popping out left and right. Uh, but at that time this was a, a real um, a beacon project, I would say. And uh, the fact that Siemens uh, went into the same boat with us and we built a fleet of 15 cars was a very nice joint venture that uh, really helped the project. But we will not be able to continue it now uh, because it's now in the hands of the big players.
خلونا نترك الماضي الجميل وناخذ نظرة نوعية على الحاضر الحالي الحاضر اللي ممزوج ليل يوم مع بهارات تاريخية وخلطات سرية وكون البصمة الوراثية مالت الشركة عبارة عن السوبر سبورتات الوحشية خلونا نسلط الضوء على المودرن ديفيشن والسي تي ار 3 الأسطورية تعد أعلى منتجاته بالقيمة والطاقة مزيج من التكنولوجيا الحديثة مع سنين مليئة بالخبرة وديزاين شكل السيارة شيء من الماضي الجميل والمستقبل الحاضر التايملس ديزاين Horsepower is not an, um, an excuse for heavy weight, <laughs> let's put it this way, because uh, you cannot substitute heavy weight and fix it with horsepower, it's impossible. A light car is important and you don't need to shoot for the maximum horsepower, uh, the ratio has to be just right yeah. between horsepower and weight. Well, the thought of the CTR3 is we needed to have a successor of uh, our first two CTR models we had, the CTR1, then the CTR2, 10 years later. And um, then we were going to a mid-engine car. Mid-engine car with the idea of like a GT1 Le Mans car. And this is also what the glass house, when you sit in the car, the feeling you get when you're looking out the windscreen at the side glass everything's very low uh, and you see the, f the fender wells in the front you feel like you are in a Le Mans race car that that's the feeling you want to have as a driver of yeah. this car This is our flagship, it's the Roof CTR3, the third generation of the legendary CTR3 type. And uh, the focus here, you can clearly see, is the rear axle. We did a complete new development, it's uh, independent. And uh, you can see, the first thing is that the car is a mid-engine car. So we have turned the drivetrain from a rear-engine car originally by 180 uh, degrees. The flat six turbo engine is now in the center of the car and the transmission is behind it and it's being attached to this very unique rear axle construction. Mm -hmm. It is solid aluminium that is being uh, milled here into four uh, modules that are being uh, assembled together and the reason why we did this um, is because the car is very low mm -hmm. but of course wide also for the good traction. So we had to use the extra space that we have up here mm -hmm. to bring these dampeners in the horizontal position because otherwise they were, would be too long when they are located directly behind the wheel that exactly. the car could not be built as low as it is. Exactly. So these huge hinges that you see here, they are deviating the forces from the wheel to the horizontal position of the shock absorber and the spring. And also a, an advantage of that is that you can easily adjust the dampeners or the height of the car with these coilover um, springs here. 
So um, together with the stabilizer, which is a, a roll bar and stabilizer, we have a very great performing package that is light and easy, easily accessible. Let's talk about the City R3. Yes. I know it has a combination of two things. The long-term experience of roof, when it comes to ideology, uh, you know, terminology, mechanical and everything, plus yes. the top-notch technology of today's automotive industry. Yeah. It was um, the uh, inspiration continue the legacy of the CTR, uh -huh. of this third generation. And the natural evolution just uh, taught us we need to be um, more independent with our own appearance uh -huh. and also our own technology. Yeah. And since Roof was always uh, at the very top league of performance, we just had to take a very big um, detour uh -huh. of development to really come up with something that is absolutely individual and unique. Awesome. And here we are. Train. Let's talk about the engine. I know there's a huge amount of horsepower yes. in this car sitting right behind us, uh, right here. How did you guys come up with the idea to put such a powerful engine on a such lightweight car? Well, it's it's the nature the nature of being quick and yeah. having good performance. Yeah. And uh, we knew that we wanted to have also a very light engine, so we chose to. Uh, work uh, to further work on the flat six B turbo engine uh -huh. and uh, with a very uh, severe development of uh, materials and components to be all uh, you know um, further developed or using better material for this higher power we can bring it with no risk at all to more than uh, 700 uh, horsepower uh -huh. and then we uh, made the clear decision to have a mid-engine car for the best handling best weight distribution.
So by bringing, by shifting uh, the, 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 the displacements closer to the center, that helps also in maneuverability and cornering and also the central gravity point of the car, right? Exactly. Yeah. These are all the advantages of the mid-engine car. But uh, the next fact is when you're turning the position from, the, from behind the rear axle to the center, you're turning the engine by 180 degrees. Uh -huh. So you need a new gearbox. Yes. And that was already clear to us that we wanted to have the most efficient manually operated gearbox. That was for the very first uh, presentation. And then later on we continued and we presented also the double clutch gearbox. So you have the choice of both, either the most efficient way with manual clutch and uh -huh. the, the, the joy of changing gears, yes. or as an alternative, the very efficient and um, double clutch gearbox and launch control. Uh, so you, you uh, in person, have you tried both? Uh, cars? Yes, of Wh course. Which one do you prefer better? I prefer the manually shifted one yeah. because I want to play with the car with both hands and both feet. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. yes. Don't forget, we are working as a base product, the best product in the world. There is no better sports car than the 911. And uh, this is always, in our mind, the base. And even when we come with a creation like the CTR3, which is a complete standalone roof car, the elements and the spirit and the DNA in that car is also coming from, if you want to say, the 50s and 60s from Porsche because their way of thinking of the old Porsche family members and engineers, this is what is a constant inspiration. It is, um, when you look uh, about 10 years ago, there was um, this uh, big trend between all the supercars to be um, optimized for the maximum top speed so that you can go 350, 380 or even 400 kilometers per hour by at the same time having a complete unique shape and a small series production. This was something that was really coming up before you did not have um, those highly specialized cars. And for us, with the CTR3 that was uh, presented in 2006, it was clear that we needed to have this evolution, you know? The CTR1 was very close to the 911. You would not re actually recognize that it is a special car. Um, the CTR2 was more independent, especially with the rear wing design, where we had our complete own functional and, and also um, design um, um, executed. And so the CTR3 needed to be more independent and more have a pure roof DNA to be um, also um, seen and accepted as its individual brand with its individual package. And therefore we wanted to have a surprise with the, with the engine. <laughs>
sounds like a beast, huh? <laughs> So under 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 this uh, upholstery and uh, decoration of the car, yes, is the roll cage, right? Correct. Yeah. yeah. It is um, the integrated roll cage that is always covered uh -huh. by the interior trim, so you can hardly recognize it, but it's there in disguise, protecting uh -huh. you, and of course giving you the strength of the chassis for all of this nice handling yeah, that yeah, we're doing yeah, here. Yeah. It handles very well, huh? Yeah. I mean, I'm overweight for this car, but I can feel the grip of the uh, of the seat on me. It's holding me. It's like telling me you're not going nowhere. See, oh, oh, oh. car wants to dance. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful beast is a very nice way to say it, yeah. definitely, yes. But it's a very controllable and tameable beast. That is very important. You can make it a beast if it wants it to behave like that, yeah. but it is very, very drivable and very docile. to like cars but you don't learn to have this passion you have it you don't it's like a gift you know like it's something that you know if, if you don't have the talent the gift you could just learn the notes and play the piano uh, this is why it is good to have a wife that has also her nose in the business. Yeah. It's also important. Yeah. <laughs> you also have to be capable of driving and controlling it. Of course, of course. <laughs>